because I am terrible with that. Well, t- you, oh, you haven't got town names yet? Not fully. Well, the ones with the uh, ones there. And, I'm sure we'll think we'll think of some. Yeah. I'll I think, ask you to consider yeah, some. we'll we'll make some as we go. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, I'm going to start by uh, talking to the seagull. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do like an intro, and then I'll introduce you, and then then we'll make a move. Okay. 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 So I'm sure you guys have seen the videos before. You know how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of a lot of it is just improvised. Feel free to chip in with stuff, ask questions. Um, yeah, just enjoy, I guess. Okay. Um. Ready? Yep. Yep. Right. Three, two, one. Oh my God! There is a seagull in Train Simulator. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, hello and welcome to the Dufferin and Lecky Light Railway, which is a route available from. Uh, Steam Workshop, which is on Steam Workshop. Hang on. No, no, no. I'll put a l- check below the link in the description below. Um, I am joined this afternoon by Sam Steverton of Blast Pro- Productions. Hello. So that's him, by the way, saying hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also Jared Dobson, otherwise known as Trolley Fodder, who is the, he is the creator of this route. So Sam and Jared, welcome to the video. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this afternoon we are in. Is that what's the name of the station then? Uh, is this Maze Poof or is this Penryn? Uh, Penryn. Pen- it is actually Penryn. Okay. Pengu. Yeah. <laughs> Pingu. Call it Pingu. There's a seagull on the roof, so uh, yeah, triggered seagull. Uh, this afternoon we'll be using Chorus Railway number no. seven, built in two thousand and five, which is the replica which the Chorus Railway built. Or did they have it commissioned? I think it was a commission, actually. Who who built? Was it? Oh no no no! It was the Statfold Barn Railway, wasn't it? I have no idea. <laughs> I think it was the Statfold Barn Railway that built it as a commission because they have the original drawings for it. I think. Ah, right. Something like that, anyway. Uh, we're also hauling, because I've had... Uh, this is the third attempt that I've done at making this video. We're hauling Talithlin railway coaches, all the vintage coaches, uh, including the booking office. These are from the original uh, pack, which is donation wear. Um, you may also know Mr. James Horrocks of the Rustic Engineman Company is building a, a new version of the route. Uh, don't know when it's going to be released, but he's doing several versions of the locos, such as like the 1940s condition, like the end of ta- the original Talflin route, and he's also doing like preservation era ones as well. All right, so let's uh, we'll head out of Penryn, and Jared, you can tell us something about the line as we're going. Well, it's. Uh... <laughs> It said in 1930-something, hang on, I don't even remember myself. Anyway, it's in the 1930s, uh, Wales. It's a small line that heads from the coast up to the slate quarry. With some farms what's, and towns dotted along the line. What's the name of the slate quarry? It's not got I one I don't know yet. yet. It's yet to be known. Oh, it hasn't got one. So everybody, we have to think of some names. Oh, I just had an idea. Uh, People, if you're watching this video, hopefully people will, uh, feel free to drop a comment in the the comment section below. Uh, If you feel any names, if you're feeling any names of towns, just contribute. And uh, perhaps Jared will add them to the route. Sounds good to me. So there you go, Jared, crowdsourcing the route. Just to mention... uh, while you're going up with your passenger set, I'm following behind you with a slate set. Oh, okay, so we've got a dual working. So I'm looking at, we're crossing over the road. See, the way you've done the roads, Jared, with like the slate walls and, you know, the level crossings, it's just 
perfect North Wales feel. I've only been up to North Wales a few times, but there are some real fundamental differences between North and South Wales in terms of, you know, infrastructure. I mean, as I'm sure everybody knows, is that um, being primarily slate based, they built everything out of slate. Mm. So, um, yeah, you know, they would have used it for houses, buildings, warehouses, engine sheds, walls, embankments, you know, pretty much everything. Cool. So, in, whereas in South Wales, it tended to be a lot more, you know, sandstone and uh, stuff like that. My frame rates actually go down quite a lot because I'm recording and I'm streaming at the same yes. time. Yes. Roughly 8,000 assets per chunk. That might also Beautiful. be... Beautiful. <laughs> but if so, I look astern, astern, if I look behind us, the, my frame rates actually go up a little bit. But if I look ahead, they're be, uh... generally about 20. It'll be the steam from the chimney as well. Oh yeah, because of the particles. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I've been having a lot of problems trying to decide which platforms are, is the up and down. Uh, probably stick to the general left, right. Is it thing? I suppose. Right. I think I've probably done it wrong. <laughs> I've just Great. turned off my um turned off the sharing on Discord and the frame rate has gone up by 2 FPS. Great. But yeah, it's, it's a very dense route and it's very heavy duty on the um, computers for it as well, well, but it's completely worth it for the scenery. But you know what, like, I'm just looking at these scenes, like, what's this station called, the first station, is this, uh, this is... Uh, is... That one's sort of... Yeah, that one. Ezgirli Kyliog. Ezgirli yeah. That's borrowed from the Chorus Railway. Are you planning to make your own station signs? I am. Uh, yeah. um, okay, once, we once the final version of the route's been finished, I'm planning on um, reskinning a few assets and adding in a few, few more yeah. custom assets. Um, oh, the, rail the Railway Hotel. Perfect. Sort of a hotel across with the pub. See, I've done it again. I've overfilled the boiler with water. <laughs> I do this every time. And this is what I mean. Like, just you know, looking at this railway pub, it's it's got such a good period setting. You know, the horse trough outside, and then out the back, the, the benches. I'm going to change. You know, there's the scene in Over the Hills where they're in the pub. Yep. This is where it's going to be. I'm going to change it to be here. I'm going to have to get rid of the umbrellas, I'm afraid, because they look a bit too modern. But yeah, I might do that too. <laughs> but they, um, the actual sort of the pub bit, if only they had a load of beers. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the scene where Mr... What's his name? Mr. Bruce, who's going to be someone else in the future of Over the Hills. This is where this is going to be. So there you go, Jared. Hey. I'm going to plug your route in Over the Hills. Awesome. Because that's generally what I do. I steal people's roots and go, hey, look at this line. It's totally original. <laughs> You've actually given me a little bit of an idea for uh -oh. a particular <laughs> beer, beer assets. I could get a bit creative with some barrels, shrink them right down. Oh, nice. For beer carry, like beer um, things. Sort of, I suppose. Make him look like mugs. Now, if I remember rightly, right here, there's a 1 in 50 gradient. Yes. A long 1 in 50 gradient. Oh, I remember. <laughs> yep, I'm already shafted. In fact, I think on this route, I think, I don't think there's actually any flat bits. I think there might be one just at the summit. Um, there's a flat bit just um, before you get from the coast to this station was all flat. Uh, and then yeah. you just straight away hit this 1 in 50 gradient. And the gradient is, it's not completely continuous, but it's pretty much continuous until you get, um, until you get a good halfway along the route. You've forgotten your lap. I forgot what? Your laps. 
Labs. Lamps. You know, like Ed Oh, my lamp, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to put the lamps on because it, for some reason, every time I uh, put the lamps on, it sort of goes back to the desktop. Ooh. I don't really know why you it does that. you probably got okay. some sort of shortcut set up on your computer somewhere for it. I have a similar issue with my um, with the fan on my computer. Um, the shortcut for my fan is Control Shift Five. Um, yeah. So for most locos, it's okay, but for some of them where they've got lights on the tender as well, trying to take the lights off the tender turns the fan on and off instead. Oh yeah. Oh man, five miles an hour. This is what happened to me the last two times I've done this. I thought these coaches were lighter. They are. We're just not driving it properly, I suppose. <laughs> well, I'm at 100% reg. What about Reversa? That's 53%. That'll, that'll do it. You can handle full Reversa up until about 7 mile an hour. Oh, there we go. I gained a little bit more speed. <laughs> I gained... One mile an hour of extra speed. Although, actually, we're increasing now. Or have we just gotten lucky? 8.5 miles per hour. Right, well, that's the first station passed through. And up on to Lincoln. But I just love the look at it. Like, right now, going up this hill. It does feel like you're actually driving a, you know, a route which has been there for a long time. Because I, I know this is going to sound a little stupid, but with some routes that I've seen in train sim, you're driving it as, and it's clear, it's like scenery placed around a, a railway. Yeah. You know, and it, it kind of feels like it, but I'm not getting that so much here. I did have an idea for a challenge years ago. But I never went through and did it. It was like, we're going to just make some scenery or try and import some scenery from Google. Because you, you could do the, you know, with Google, the, the tiles. Yeah, and like the, the elevation the image tiles. overlay and all that, all that. So I was thinking, how about if we was to do that? Oh, I'm actually getting some speed now. Yeah, you're on I'm running out of water in the boiler. Whoops. Oh, this, this junction here. Yeah. Uh, to the left goes to an abandoned um, station terminus. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm loving the overgrown feel. That really does feel uh, like old and overgrown. And I love the fact that the rails have been lifted as well. Why was this station abandoned then? We've not thought of a reason for that yet. No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Running out of water. And various theories it could have been for all sorts of reasons, but it was the real reason we put it in was just sort of to add a um Ooh, add a new point going into the front part of scenery to it. Shit. <laughs> Shut the rag. I'm not sure you've got doors on that side. About Probably not, no. <laughs> I think this was the station I was looking at the other day. This is the one with the roots namesake. Brakes! Which translated into Welsh, um, supposedly comes out as Slate Valley. Nice. That's what Google tells me anyway. I think you're <laughs> right, I don't think I have doors on this side. Nah, you've got to flip a couple of them. Whoops, okay, everybody's gonna have to walk on the track. <laughs> In blatant violation of every safe health and safety policy, but it's 1930s Wales, nobody cares. So, this is what I was talking about, is like the feel. So I don't know if you, how quick you guys can see or how up to date your image is. Um, it's pretty instant. Is it? Like, I'm on the main street now. Yeah. 
it's yeah. real time. Or it's why I suggested using Discord instead of Steam, because with a Steam one, you often end up with about, well, for me and Jared, because we do a lot of Steam streaming to each other, um, we end up with a good 30 second or more delay on it. But with Discord, yeah. it's a much, um, it's much it's quicker. Not, but uh, you can see what I mean, like I'm sort of walking down the main street and you can't see the, the railway. You can't really see. It, it feels like you're in a town. Like, where's, let me show you an example. Over here at the back, there's not so much like detail because it's further away from the line. So you're all, you know, you're always going to have to do that. You know, you just put block assets down because otherwise it'll take you forever and a day to make it. But then when you get close, you have properly made gardens houses, lots of assets around it actually feels like people live here I mean this house with the garden that is amazing did you have to do all this individually or is it like a block it, asset? It's a block because <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever seen it used like this but it looks spectacular Thank you. like all the houses around these, they feel like they're, people live in them then you go further up there's a farm by there. The farmhouse with the van and everything. Oh, there's a dog. Grab a dog. <laughs> it really feels like people live here. And then you've got the church as well. Because I was going to have scenes where people get married in uh, over the hills as well. So having a church scene really helps that. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely something that Jared does very well. Is He makes the route feel more than just a railway line. He makes it feel yeah, like a, a proper yeah. location and a real, a real place. I mean, place. look at this scene here, just where I'm looking now, that just looks... you got the railway, which is the reason we're here, is why we're playing train sim. But it's actually running through an environment, it's actually running through a real place. And that's, you know, it, it's, it comes down to railway modelling as well, doesn't it? You know, it's... Uh, yeah. It's really good. Well, well, I have to say, well done. What was this station called, or doesn't this one have a name? Uh, this one has the namesake of the route itself. Oh, Dufferin Lecky. Yes. Nice. So, um, in terms of the history of the line, it was it was set up as its own company, a bit like the Talathlin then, originally, yeah. and then. Is it going to get taken over by the Great Western at any point? Um, no. In fact, if you have a look at that synopsis I sent you, this. Um, oh, I haven't read that yet, sorry. Yeah, if you have a look at that, that's got a bit of information about what sort of the plan for it. My aim is one day yeah. to make that synopsis into a film. Um, certainly. Okay. Which will probably take many, many years and may not happen at all, but... The idea is that it's, it would cover the history of the route from the area it's set in at the moment to the modern day. Yeah. Um, but in short, it's a, um, a typical slate mining route of North, North Wales. Um, but it's also quite interesting in that at the top end, it has a coal mine in very close vicinity. Yeah. Um, so it would have had a lot of coal and slate traffic and then um, shut, shut down during the Second World War for all the stock to be commandeered for the war effort. Um, yeah. And then long road to preservation after that is the short version of it. See, no, I mean, that's, that's one of the important things about when you do make a route in Train Simulator. You need to have a story about it you know the route can't just it can't just be oh you've got five stations and they go a b c d and it needs you know railways were built for a purpose yep and again this is something no i've been, been helping with i'm not much good at route building myself i can do little tweaks but um but i do have quite a good imagination for what a stereotypical railway should look like and why it should exist um, yeah that's a big one yeah, it's something I kept saying during the route's production is for everything you add to the route, you've got to think of why you're adding it to the route. Yeah, yeah. the railway. You can't just was... say, oh, we're 
you're going to have a coal mine, you have to say, why is there a coal mine? Oh, where's, there was a rich coal seam here. Oh, and yeah. then you start developing the story further, you know? I'm yeah. really not doing well again. Yeah, gradient level's out here. How much further? Oh, one, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Once we get some speed, I can notch back and then I can spare some steam to put some water in the boiler. Yeah. I think on the next left it goes up to 1 in 80. Oh, bloody hell. So it's not quite as steep as the last few hills. Right. So you think I'm going to need main, some water. The main issue we have with this view is a lack of stock to run on it. Yeah, that's true. The route itself yeah, is that's brilliant, good. but... It's always going to have that problem with being narrow gauge, though, because there's yeah. not much narrow gauge stuff for train sim. Yeah. Unless yeah, you think... fancy, you know, like a G44 uh, electric unit from the Albula line to run it's on it. Gauge. Wrong gauge. Yeah, what well, is it, 800 mil or... Um... It's a... No, no, I think the Albula line is meter gauge, isn't it? Yeah, meter. I was playing with that the other day as well. Oh my god, it's beautiful. <laughs> this section is one of my favourite screenshot spots. The snake weaving between the, the wall and the houses. I'm a bit, um... My dad. I, I, I can't pronounce it. Yeah, I think I've just, I've just crushed my head against the rock. <laughs> it's a tight fit. There's a pretty tight curve I put um, is it in 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 Inisha? I can't pronounce that. I don't know. Inisha. 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 Oh, I'm too far off. It's I'll a, have a look now. That's just it's about where I'm at. Sheep? You of course there had to be sheep. Don't worry, there's plenty more to come. Yeah, Hooray. the best the best bit for the sheep is just before the tunnel. Where some have escaped well, like, onto uh, the line side. Clearly, you know, ganging up on me being a Welshman here. <laughs> oh, I got. We know where your favourite sheep location is. Ha uh ha! -huh. <laughs> I call it racism, you know. That. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, I mean, there is a ratio of. Is it three sheep to every person in Wales? Probably something like that. I mean, I'm from Yorkshire, and we have a lot of sheep in Yorkshire, but not quite oh, that there many. there is um, a set of sidings here. I could set one or two coaches off here. Yeah, you could do that. Although well, the could carriage see. workshops at the next station. Yeah, my frame rates are dying. <laughs> yeah, I'm Hell running yeah. at 12 FPS. Sorry. I'm running. I went. So, yeah. I just went down to about 14 FPS. But uh, I've got this feeling because I'm uh, I'm streaming as well. I might be on yeah. yeah. It's like so I'm recording and uh, streaming. It's like Seven thousand lessons probably doesn't help either. Don't speed. I'm speeding. Which side do I need to go on in Anisha? That's a centre platform. Oh, so that's alright then. Your doors are on the right hand side of your train, I think. Yeah, I think so. This chorus logo is not very powerful, is it? Not no. really. Be interesting to see how um, James's new Taliban stuff works. Yes, um, I, I was able to test it a few weeks ago. It's still, you know, very much work in progress, but yeah, you know, it does look like really good. Well, oh, there's a traction engine. Yep. I was hoping you'd spot that. Now, if anyone out there who's making content, like uh, models, 3D models, i.e. Cough Cough Chris Wilson of Caledonia Works, or uh, <laughs> Cough Cough Guillaume Rhys Davies of Sim Nation, Cough Cough, or uh, James Horrex of the Rustic Engine Man Company, or anyone else that feels like making some 3D models, if you fancy making a new traction engine, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would be really happy to uh, to receive it. I have a lot of influence, you see. <laughs> I just basically, I just scream abuse at people until I get what I want. That's how it works, though, isn't it? Well, yeah. Have you thought? I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this, and then it's made, and you win. <laughs> 
of course, I've been telling people to make um, Great Western 813 for me for about the last 10 years of train sim. And I think at some point it will be made, so, you know. I'm still waiting for Australian mm. stuff. Do you know what I want, Jared? Yes. New South Wales Government Railways C38 class. Uh, they're alright, I suppose. <laughs> see, I want, I want to see the thing. probably because it's one of the only Australian locos that I know of. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I did the documentary when I was younger and it was just, oh, I love that loco. I'm going to need oh, a yeah. blow up. <laughs> you really are struggling there, aren't you? Three miles an hour. Oh. <laughs> Whose idea was it to take five coaches? Uh, I think it was yours. <laughs> it probably was mine, yes. Yeah. Again, I haven't actually had a look around this village yet. Well, you got time then. <laughs> yeah, we need we need to have a blow up, so we got time. It probably would be quicker to walk from the last station up here. <laughs> There's more sheep, and the town is right on the you know the station is right on the main street, which I love. I'm really digging this narrow gauge feel. Do you know what locos would be amazing for this route? And I'm I'm sure somebody will probably throw a potato at my head for saying it. But um, oh wait, hang on, Jared, have you made these uh, station signs? No, that's from the Marty branch. Oh we, right, okay. <laughs> we wouldn't be on the workshop otherwise. Yeah, that's true. Oh, it's a very, very tight fit between the walls. It's and the absolutely beautiful. There I've got to go. admit, in, I'm a little bit biased because of help with it, but I think this has got to be one of the nicest, if not the nicest route for train simulator. The detail I is, do just think it is one phenomenal. <laughs> it does hate frame rates, though. It does, <laughs> but it's the cost of a good route. Um, you got to pay the price, and that's, uh, you know, this is the price we pay. <laughs> Let's fill the boiler completely full of water. Right, more sheep. I love this custom tunnel village. as well. The tunnel is just, it's great. Oh, you'll get nice. to that. Sorry. It's a nice little um, shed. Or, um, this is the carriage and wagon shop, is it? Yes. I'm really digging the point work there. That is awesome. Oh, that's a 10 I think, I think that's. I think that's the most complicated point work I've ever seen for an arrow gauge route. It was a pain in the butt. Oh, I bet that was. Looking at this freeway point and then the crossover that's right next to it, that must have been an absolute pig to make. Just a little bit. <laughs> I'm just looking around the village now while we're having a blow up, which is going extremely slow. What, what's your fire mass in water? 154 pounds for the fire mass and 0 0.99 for the water. I've overfilled the boiler. You've also done a bit too much with the uh, fire mass too. I generally sit yeah. around 130, 140. Uh, so basically I've killed it. Kinda. It's alright, it's downhill from here. Oh, is it? Oh, that's right. Then. At least up until the next station. And then it's massively uphill again. Yeah, another 1 in 50 after the quarry. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. I think the really nice thing about this route is that you do get a chance to properly open up the engines. Like, for a lot of routes when it's just flat, you only get to open them up for a few minutes and then you have to shut off again because you're speeding. But with this, you can yeah, have that's the problem, isn't properly it? opened up the full way. Have you still got your brakes on? <laughs> no, they're off. Okay. But I'm glad you reminded me because it is something that I do tend to do. <laughs> Thought so. You could probably so I had a little, here I you had a little list of stuff that I was going to talk about. Oh, I'm, I'm moved up north. I'm living just outside Hull. So, uh, Sam, where is it that you're from again? Um, I'm from Howarth. 
way. So, Howard, near Keefley. Um, no, near Keefley. So it's Probably about an hour's, hour and a half drive from me then. Yeah. But I leave uh, about 10 minutes away from is about, is, so. I'm about 45 minutes away from York City Centre and about an hour and a half from Pickering. Yeah. Probably about the same. Something I think... Like I think York to um, York to Keithley by train is about an hour, I think. Oh, is it? Something like that. My frame rates have come back. I've got 60 frames a second now. Hey. An hour's 38. <laughs> Ooh, just a warning. There's a five mile an hour ungated crossing coming up. All right, I'm going to slow down in just a second then. It's just after the uh, speedboard, and it's more of a, a warning, if it makes any sense. We can't even see it yet. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's hidden. The camouflage speed limit sign. <laughs> Although I'm using my loco brake, which literally did nothing at all. Yeah, the thing is, like, use, use the loco brake and it has virtually no effect. But then you use the, the full train brake and your wheels lock up. <laughs> it's the first time I've been on this route since you've done all the um, updates at the other station at the bottom. Oh, and right. I've got to admit, I do like the little bathing area by the lake. But it's where I'm at. I do think the Talithan railway coaches do suit it. Yeah, that's why I use them a lot. But um, yeah, I mean, James is going to make a brand new set. I've, been, I've seen all the screenshots. Have you been following his uh, Facebook page? Yes, yep. very closely. With much this interest. Is, um... Oh yeah. I've, I've got several reskin plans for a lot of that stock, so I'm really quite looking oh, forward yeah. to it. Oh, you're coming up to one of my, uh, one of the things I'm oh, just proud of. Oh, wow. Wow. How did you do that? With great pain, but it turned out alright. Pain and suffering. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> that looks like a lot of pain and suffering. That is beautiful. As a tunnel, especially a narrow gauge tunnel. Oh, I'm loving that. I'm actually getting good frame rates in it as well. <laughs> yeah, the that looks very much um, very Fastiniog railway e. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, if you're looking, the, um, <laughs> if you're looking at tunnel, it's it's almost like a mining tunnel. It's propped up with little wooden, uh, little yeah, it's wooden propped like, uh, and, wooden supports. Yeah, There's it has that yard. feel. Oh, is there a station? Oh, it's a, le a yard. Just a yard. It doesn't. I haven't actually figured out what that yard's for yet, so if you have any ideas... You could have a cheese factory nearby. Cheese, you say? Yes. Oh. Gotta be a cheese factory on every route. I think you're gonna like the view from around this corner. Oh, wow. Now it's going very Linton Barnstaple type, uh... <laughs> Not, is it? No, is it? Yeah, it is Linton Barnstable. Yeah. The aim with the route was to try and create something that sort of captured the spirit of every Namagage railway in one. It was sort of to try and create a generic a generic Namagage railway that you know, felt like a stereotypical one to cover everything. So so, Reese, you've just gone over the uh, standard gauge line. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, your, that's a little something. bit of Great Western on the route. Yeah. Yes! We need some panniers. There's a station on the opposite side of the lake, which you might be able to see. By the way, uh, speed limit's 15. <laughs> I'm only doing 18.8. Chill, it's fine. <laughs> We're just coming down quite a steep hill into... I don't think this loco brake is holding very well. 
what a beautiful little village. Is this a lake then, or is it like an inland waterway? It's a lake. Okay. Is this the terminus of the line then? Uh, for passengers, yeah. Unless you're okay. a miner or a, uh, well, unless you're a miner or a quarryman. Yes. Have a look around the lake and I'll point out some things that I'm quite happy with. Wheel slip! <laughs> wheel slip. Still on the platform. Wheel flats. Wheel flats. We all got wheel flats now. It's cool. And they're on the wrong side. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> we need coaches that have doors on both sides. Malmesbury. Yep. That's a big water tower. All right, let's go have a look. Oh, I like this footbridge. That's a lot of fence posts. <laughs> well, you made that out of individual fence posts? Yes. Oh, my God, that must have taken you ages. <laughs> it took a little while. So what's over here? Is this a school or something? Nope. Oh no, this is a station. Yep, is it? that's that's the standard gate station. Oh, okay. It's a long platform. But there's no run round. Oh no, there's, there doesn't need to be a run round loop. There is a run round loop, it's just not at the platform. So this is the Great Western line then? Yes. Nice two-level signal box. It's to get the height so you can see all the points. Do you have really long standard gauge trains then coming up here? It's, uh, it's more of a branch line, but because it's a, um, a meeting point for the navigation and standard gauge, um, and the aim is that with that town around the lake, it was supposed to be a popular tourist destination. Oh, okay, so you had like excursion trains and stuff. Yeah. If you have a look at the uh, the little dock area of the lake, there's a steam crane I made from scratch with in-game assets. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that is really quite cool. Oh, and there's uh, people swimming. Oh, shut off that. <laughs> Um, lots of people swimming in the lake. That's cool. So what sort of traffic came up on the lake then? I think it's just um, <clears throat> general uh, touristy stuff. Okay, so not really like cargo vessels. No. no. Small, don't like small sailboats, maybe a little bit of fishing. Okay. It is quite a big town, so I suppose you need to... Uh, yes, it's the town where all the miners work. Oh, okay. Live. Well, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> I think this is the first time since the start of this video that we've actually blown off. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a picture just to prove that I, could ma I can make steam. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, while we have steam in the boiler, should we make a move up towards the... Uh, the slate quarry. Sounds like the plan. You might want to check your set of points. Nah, they're fine. Okay. <laughs> Tell you. It'll, it'll be fine, it's fine. <laughs> it does look a lot better now you've added in all the um, all the hills in the background as well. Mm, yeah. Oh, so now we're we'll getting it. We're I'm coming up to, to the money shot now, there. I think. Oops. What was that, Reese? We're coming up to the money shot. Yes. One of. This, <laughs> this is where all the um, the screenshots, the famous screenshots, have been uh, taken. <laughs> now, i got to say, these screenshots which I've seen posted of this part of the route, they've just made me so happy. Because they really give you the, the sensation of being in, you know, up in the hills of North Wales. Thank you. I'm glad that I've done it right. I mean, you've done it justice, I have to say. Let's go have a let's go 
I mean, wow. There are not many routes with this level of uh, detail. That's what am I doing for speed? Because it takes so bloody long, yeah. And it's a big hit on frame rates. The performance, yeah, I know. It's, uh, that's just one of the sad things about train sim, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see though if, um, yeah, seeing the, the seem to have found a new enthusiasm for going back and fixing it and patching it up. It would be interesting to see if we actually do make any more improvements to it after 64 bit. Well, I, I've got this feeling that train, you know, Dovetail Games doing the 64 bit update, that's them sort of future proofing it. Yeah. That's the sort of feeling that I'm getting from them. They're just getting it ready for when they sort of say, okay, community, it's yours now. Which, to be honest, although they haven't done it yet, they might as well have done because most of the stuff that people are getting excited about now is all third party and community made stuff. Yeah, there's not been that much development that's actually from Dovetail Games. There's yeah. occasional things, but not much anymore. Yeah, and even a lot of the you know, the Steam content that's released is still third party people's. There's not much that's from Dovetail themselves. Yeah. Which, you know, I think really I think they're wanting to move on to Train Sim World, but Well the thing is like I understand that and I get it. You know, Train Sim World is the future of their business. I get that. But they've also shot them considering that's gonna be the future, they also shot themselves in the foot. By yeah. only doing routes which have already been done. Yeah, exactly. You know, like L L London to Oxford is the best example that I can give. It's like you're going to remake the game with all these amazing graphic settings and new control abilities, and it's absolutely fantastic. It really is. It, the performance is amazing. But why would you do London to Oxford again for the third time? Yeah. Why not London to Bristol? And it's, you know? it's train sim world, but they've still gone for Germany, America, and UK, Britain. which but is what they've done for train Hypothetically sim. speaking, if what they should have done is train sim world, but done, you know, the Exeter to Plymouth, you know, in the yeah. 50s, Riviera in the 50s with Steam in train sim world as their main release. Yeah. You can but imagine then... with train sim world graphics, what that would have looked like. I know it would have been astronomical to make, but that would have just, oh, that would have sold, you know? But again, you if you have a new product, product if you have where do I need to go, stuff, Jared? Uh, to the right is the quarry. So we're going to the right? Yes. Awesome. If you have a look at the releases lived in there, there's not much that's actually Steam era at all, or that's Steam no. era and done to a high quality. Um, but I mean, if they were going to do anything Steam for Train Sim World, you would have thought they would have done it with the West Somerset Railway. But yeah. Instead, that's why when they released yeah. the West Somerset Railway, I was amazed. I, in fact, I was gobsmacked when I found out that they weren't doing Steam. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Yeah. You do a preserved route with no Steam? That made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever." And what made it worse was the fact that they were trying to pass it off as a diesel gala with only two yeah. diesels. You know, only two locomotive classes. And it seemed a bit... It just seemed a bit of a letdown, really. It, it seemed like they were too eager to get it out, or so eager to get it out, like they weren't thinking about what they should actually include in it, or what people would want and expect from it. Yeah. There was just too much commercial pressure on them to get it released. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we're at the end of the line. We've made it to the quarry. I think we'll have a little look around the quarry, and then that'll be the episode. All right. So uh, I'll just hold her up there. I've completely overfilled the boiler again. <laughs> 
right. tell you what, the view, so let's from, have a look uh, at this quarry. the view from up here is incredible. I, uh, and you know you no, added all the hills in again, look. Jared. Hmm? What was it, sorry, all, all the hills you added in the background. It looks so much better with them now. It doesn't load any yeah. detail on them, but just the lumps on the terrain rather than it being all flat. Yeah, I've still got mod out though. Absolutely beautiful. But this route is going to be one when we get some more stock in train sim, especially narrow gauge stuff like slate wagons and more locos. Yeah, I'm just going to be playing this non-stop, playing with slate wagons. If only we could have a working incline. Because the way you've done this, this incline, is really quite clever. <laughs> you know, you've used like cable reels, I mean, these cable reels for the pulleys. I don't know what the black stuff is. Uh, that, uh, what is it? It's fencing, isn't it? No, it's cable trunking from the Falmouth uh, branch. Oh, cable trunking. Yes. But this, this, the, the way that you've done this is really clever. That is amazing, you know. I've, I've yet to add it to the rest of the hills. <laughs> well, you know, but just looking at the way it's all been done, we need, yeah, you need some machines, I think, like uh, yeah. some men working. Like, we need more assets, really, like men working, like digging and stuff. Yeah. Well, again, I love still, this bit. You've got, the like, the, still work the, in progress, the but... Shunt. Again, this whole quarry area was loosely based off um, off Lamberit. Yeah, Denorwick Quarry. Yep. Um, I've been there. It's, it's... And I can could, I could tell you from uh, Denorwick Quarry, you get the sensation of just how big a scale the operation was. Yeah. You know, and I'm getting that feel here. You can really feel it, you know, it's like they really are just moving an entire mountain. And I think that was, again, it was one of the things which I think was, for a narrow gauge Welsh route, important to get. This is sort of the, this is why the route is here. This whole mountain being moved, this is what's paying for the railway and the whole valley to be kept yeah. alive, really. Big pile of coal as well. Where was the coal mine, by the way? Um, uh, that was the left uh, set of points. Oh, yeah, there you it can is. just see it down yeah, at the bottom. Okay. So this is the colliery. Okay. Yes. I really like the idea that you've combined like a quarry and a colliery. Oh, it's it's a couple of uh... details. I do think maybe geolo geologically it might not work because they have two very different rocks. Yeah. Like slate is where you've got like hard rocks which have compressed and then coal is from forests. But hey, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Maybe they used to be a forest. They used to be a little forest right next to a massive pile of slate. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, and now you, guys, the you, you guys are going to hate me now because I'm going to finish the video by doing something typical of me. You're going to try and go up the incline, aren't you? Maybe. <laughs> Power. Matt Hiddleston's already had a try at that. Didn't go so well. He got about half. Come on. What he derailed and then he, he derailed, but oh. it glitched halfway up. Like it has now, and it's still technically moving forwards. Just like that. Oh, I'm, I'm going to stick with it. Oh no, I can't. Damn it. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> what I might do is that mod where you can um, get rid of the, you know, the error message that comes up when you derail. All right. Yeah, and you. Because then um, you, you know, they, oh, I can't even speak. Um, when you, when the mouse, is... fuck, tongue twisted. <laughs> right, when when the error message comes up, you could just cancel it. You don't have to quit out of the game. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. Anyway, um, so that is the Dufferin Lehi Light Railway. Uh, the link is below in the description. So I'll put links for the Dufferin Lehi Light Railway. I'll put links for Blast Pipe Productions. Um, the Chorus Railway by Skyhook Games, which this, which the logo was. I think I'll put a link to the Talithlin Railway um, donation wear project thing, just in case. I'm not sure if it's still going or not, but we'll see. I think it um, is, but it's. Um, I mean, if I remember correctly, it's mail order only, so 
for a lot yeah. of people it's difficult because it it comes on a disc and a lot of uh, a lot of certain a lot of people don't even have like. CD-ROMs anymore. Yeah, exactly. There's not many uh, computers that are built with disc readers now. No, they they're just not in use. Like I've got two disc drives on my computer at home, and I, I haven't used them for about three years. Yeah. And then my laptop that I've got now it doesn't even have one fitted. Mine neither. I had to get a um, I had to get a USB one for it. Alright. Well, so chaps, um, I was joined today by Jared Dobson and Sam Stevenson. That was the Dufferin Lecky Light Railway, four miles long. Took 45 minutes, probably because I spent most of it doing about three miles an hour. Um, <laughs> yeah, so go and download it. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.